If you really like what the cloud has to offer, but your systems aren't always online, like a cruise ship, or maybe even in space, or you just have some specific requirements that means you need more control than what Azure can give you, I've got a solution for you. And this is a way to make a private cloud with the Azure tools you already know. And you can always build this kind of hardware yourself or buy a validated rack from a certified vendor like this. And that may sound a little scary and probably a little expensive. So it's probably best if you try before you buy. So in this video, I'll show you how to deploy Azure Stack HCI as fast as possible. Now, if you were gonna do something like this manually by yourself, you'd have to buy a whole lot of equipment, storage, servers, set up some networks, then you would have to do some Active Directory prep, download the Azure Stack image from the cloud because it's not like regular Windows. Then you'd have to build and configure a lot of VMs on your hosts, then install and set up the Azure Arc agent to tie it into the cloud. And then finally, you could deploy your HCI cluster. And believe me, that is a lot of work. But today, I've got a three-phase process that is made to do all of the work for you. And you'll find the link to the guide in the video description. First, the prep phase. Open the Azure portal and then go right up here to the cloud shell. Type this command to clone one of Microsoft's GitHub repos, and that'll take a quick second. Then use the Azure CLI developer commands to log in. Once that's done, click over here. That's the editor and you can see all of the folders that were downloaded when you clone that repo. Now in here is a subfolder called the Azure Jumpstart HCI box. We wanna CD over to that folder, and the first command we need here is azd space init, and this will initialize a new project which needs a name. Then all you have to do is type azd space up, and that'll start your deployment. And it's gonna ask you a few questions like what subscription do you wanna use? which region do you want to build in and for a windows administration password and this is going to be the password that's used throughout the rest of this video and just be aware that you are typing it in plain text but once that gets all wrapped up into the deployment that's going to be encrypted next do you want to save this environment for the future i'd probably say yes and then it's going to take a few minutes to analyze your subscription and region resources that you have enough capacity to build everything. Most importantly, an E32 V5 virtual machine that's gonna host everything for you. Once that's all complete, it'll ask you if you wanna use Bastion to access your HCI box. And I'll say yes, but if for some reason you like straight RDP instead of Bastion because you prefer things that are less secure, you can do that, but you're going to need to add an NSG rule for port 3389 inbound first. With all that done, the deployment will kick off and you'll see a link like this so you can watch the build in the Azure portal. And this will all take about 10 to 15 minutes. Once that's done, you can go to the resource group and find the HCI box client VM. And that's the big guy that's gonna hold all your stuff. Connect into it using Bastion. The username here is arcdemo and you'll use the same password you entered during the deployment. Once you sign in, this PowerShell script will start automatically and register all of the Azure providers that you're gonna to need to make all this work. And it's gonna configure your storage and then download the Azure Stack HCI images and prep everything and it'll take eh, about an hour or so. Once all that's done, go back to the Azure portal and search for Azure Arc. Then on the left, you wanna to go to machines. These will be your HCI VMs that have the Arc agent. And Arc allows the VMs in the HCI cluster, anywhere else on-prem, some other cloud, or out in space to all be managed using the same set of Azure tools. Take a look at the extensions blade on the left, and you'll have the Edge device, lifecycle, and remote support extensions here. They all need to say that they are succeeded on each one of your hosts before we continue. So while you're waiting, go back to the resource group where your cluster is set up, go to Access Control, and you wanna add a new role. Search here for the Key Vault Administrator, then click Next, and pick the user ID that you're deploying everything with, and yes, you do need to do this even if you're the subscription owner like I am. Then go back and add another role for the Storage Account Contributor to that same user. And we're ready to get the cluster resources deployed now. So bastion in to the HCI VM, 
go to the File Explorer and open the C drive and the HCI box folder. And all of this stuff here is all open source. Feel free to use it and poke around and even improve on it if you like. The file that we need most here is this ARM template file. Just copy all of that and then jump back to the Azure portal. Search for the word deploy and then pick deploy custom template. Click to build from the editor and then whatever's here, delete it and paste in your code and click save at the bottom. Then go right back to the VM, open the parameters file and rinse and repeat. Here, click the edit parameters button, paste everything and hit save and you're ready to start the deployment, which will take just a few minutes. Now with all the prep done, we move on to phase two, deploying the cluster. Back in your resource group, you'll have the cluster icon, which you can click on that and you'll see a banner up here that you've been validated, but now we need to deploy. And if you get all the green checks here, just click next and then click create. Now this process is gonna take about an hour or so to complete, and it'll also be several minutes before you see any progress here at all, so be patient. And with just those few commands, your cluster is built. But if you know anything about clusters, that doesn't mean that we're ready. We've got to add some cluster resources so that we can have something to deploy on. And that's where we go to phase three, getting our VMs up and running. So what can you really do with this? Well, at the bottom, we've got some supported workloads. General VMs are certainly a use case, along with Kubernetes clusters and Azure Virtual Desktop. And comment below which one of those you wanna see in our next video. Now, all of those solutions require VMs, which means we need some images. So let's click over here and add one. And when you do, you see that you can add from the Azure Marketplace or your own images stored in your storage account or a local file share. And because it doesn't take me any work at all, I'll just pull one from the Marketplace and you give it a name and then pick the image that you wanna use. Now the default storage path here is fine and we'll explain more about that in a second. So just click next and then add the tags that you would use for any other build in the cloud and then repeat with any other additional images that you're gonna need. And those images will be downloaded from Azure and stored on the HCI hosts so that you can deploy VMs locally. And there's one more thing that we need before we can finally build a workload, and that's a logical network. But don't click add, because the work has already been done for you. Just bastion back into your host, go back to that C drive HCI box folder, and then right click here on the configure VM logical network, and then run with PowerShell. That's gonna do a bunch of things for you to set up the network based on all of the other data that's already been set up for the cluster. And now we're ready to start provisioning your VMs. Now you can do that right here within the cluster if you want to, or from the Azure portal. Just go to the VM section and click create. And then you'll wanna click here where it says more VMs and related solutions. Then deploy an Arc VM and pick your subscription and resource group like always and give it a name. For the region, you wanna pick here the HCI cluster and then pick one of the images that you've downloaded to your cluster select your security type as always, but now you also get to pick the amount of CPU and RAM and memory type because this is really running inside Hyper-V, so you've got more options. Enter your local admin creds and you can even join a domain here if you want to. On the next tab, you can add some data disks if you need, and on the next tab, you must add a network, otherwise you're not going anywhere and that's gonna need a name, and then you pick the logical network that's already been set up for you. Click next and add your standard tags, and then create. And then you can see your new VMs right here inside your cluster. So with all that in place, you're ready to set up your Kubernetes or AVD, along with all of those regular VMs to do anything that you need to in these highly secure or offline scenarios. So give the HCI jump box a try, and then you'll wanna check out this video for some crazy Azure deployments. Happy learning.